So here's an interesting little piece of trivia as it relates to this orchestrator solution that VMware has put together. Uh, until just very recently, uh, this automation solution, this tool designed to do lots of things with a very small number of clicks, did not actually have a really good solution for looping. Until I think a couple of versions ago, the only way you could get looping done required a complex dance uh, involving setting up counters, and then with those counters, um, decrementing the counters, and then running through an actual loop of different tasks uh, in order to identify where you were at in the loop and accomplish whatever it is you needed to accomplish. Uh, these counters were literally numbers. So if I had you know four items I had to do things with, well, then I would set up uh, literally a loop. I mean, connecting these four items together, uh, I would set up first a check to see am I at zero or not. And if I'm not at zero, well, then go ahead and uh, decrement the counter down. And then after you've decremented the counter, see which virtual machine or which item that we needed to act upon. And then once we did that, then we actually acted on that item. And then we went back to check to see if we were at zero. So. Uh, repeat, 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 until we went from four to three to two, all the way down to zero. At zero, well, then you exit on out, and you're done. Kind of an oddball way of doing looping, and a lot of complexity here in order to get the task done. I think there was even like a startup task here that you would need in order to identify what the counter was going to be. So five items just to do a loop. I'm showing you this because these five items, or various iterations of these five items, if you start Googling around in your, in your own personal learning path here with Orchestrator, you're probably going to find a variety of examples of how to set these things up as loops. And in, indeed, there may be some situations where you may need to use this kind of loop in order to do some kinds of looping. But thankfully, VMware has in this, and I think the immediately previous version, included a, a new activity, a, a new object in the workspace called the for each object that can simplify this looping process for a great number of situations. I'm not going to show you all these because th this is a complex structure and you can find plenty of documentation for it out on the internet. But I do want to show you this for each object because it, it can simplify some things but it can also make other things just a little bit more complicated. So I, I want to, because we're kind of keeping things very simple here, I want to show you the introduction of how to do looping with the for each object and then kind of set you out on your own to handle your specific configurations because your workflows are going to be different than mine and everybody else's. Let's start first by not actually doing this provision VM from a template workflow that we created before. And I, and I want to do it this way just because, well, first and foremost, it takes half an hour for every virtual machine to provision. So testing this thing can take a really long period of time. Uh, and, and second, I want, to, I want to start even simpler, as simple as we can get. So let's start first by creating a new workflow called um, a provision a VM, let's call this provision a VM object. OK, so I'm not actually cloning a virtual machine with this uh, with this workflow. All I really want to do with this workflow is instead to create the virtual machine object, which can take just a couple of seconds to complete. So let me go back down here to my library and under vCenter uh, and then virtual machine management and basic. Let's go here to create a uh, simple virtual machine right here. So this has nothing to do with actually going about streaming virtual machines, copying them, any of the effort that takes a really long period of time. You will see that there are a pretty common set of items of parameters that we need to set in here, similar to what we had to do before. But here, we're just creating the object itself and not installing an operating system. I do want the user to have to plug in the virtual machine name that they want whenever they create this new VM. But the other items down here, I just want to set these to some default values. Okay, So I'm interested in, for example, server 2012. Uh, I'm interested in uh, the folder for this one, just like before, is going to be set to um, I can get my items here. If I can set this folder down here to the folder that I created before, to my developers folder. Um, for the resource pool, I'll set the resource pool again as well. So all these things that um, we were creating before um, and setting up for these items. Here's the host object down here, which will be ESX1. 
Um, the disk size, I'll just set it up to 60 gigs, and the memory size, 210, 24. The number of CPUs to one CPU, and I'll put it over here on my server net, down here. And then lastly, the data store and thin provision. Sorry about all these, this just take a really long time to complete. So I'm doing this because I want to set the number of items that the user would have to answer, the number of questions that user would have to answer, just to a single question here, VM name. And then when I'm done, I'm going to output this virtual machine object. So I have what is really the simplest of custom uh, workflows that I could possibly create here within Orchestrator. Let's go ahead and close this down, because now I want to show you, when I go ahead and run this new workflow, what's going to happen? I go over here and I start the workflow. It asks me for the virtual machine name. I hit in VM4 and submit. And in really just a second or so, it talks over to vSphere and requests vSphere to just simply create a new virtual machine. So if I do a little update over here, I'll see that VM4 object created almost instantaneously. Now, this is great if I only have one that I need to create, but I want to incorporate looping here so that I can create multiple of these objects without having to go through all this effort. Let's now create a new workflow here called provision multiple VM objects. So provision multiple VM objects. I'm separating this workflow out from the other workflow because it allows me to have the single instance, and then to repeat that single instance using this for each element that I'll show you here in just a second. That separation really important because it makes the generation of these workflows just a lot easier to do. So here is my multiple provisioning workflow. And this time, what I'm interested in dragging in is not the, the actual create object, but is instead a generic element called for each, the for each element here. This for each element is a, is, is a special class, a special type of element, because what it does is you will point it towards a specific workflow, and it will then repeat that workflow as many times as is necessary to satisfy the number of items that exist in some array that you also plug it into. Okay, so let's, let's, let's attach it first to my provision AVM workflow. So here's provision AVM object. I'll hit the select button here, and there we go. Let's go ahead and promote those parameters then. So you'll notice that because we attached this to that very simple workflow, I have a single thing that I need to plug in for a two for each against, and that is the name of the virtual machine that I want to create. Now, in no way do I want to actually set a value here. I want the user to be able to input this in at the time that they execute the workflow. So let's leave this as input here and then validate it, obviously, make sure we're good. And now let's run this workflow. When we run the workflow, you'll see that here under virtual machine name, I haven't defined any of the presentation values yet, but here under virtual machine name, I can then bring up what is called the array of string dialog box and insert in the individual values that I require. So in this case, I would need to do, oops, I need to make sure not to put a blank one in there, but uh, VM5 and VM6 and VM7, for example. These three now become an array of values, one, two, three, they get plugged into my uh, for each object workflow here. When I run the workflow, you can see it's now executing in a loop and creating these multiple objects over here inside of the vSphere web client. So I should, after a second or so, just uh, end up seeing five, seven, yeah, five, six, and seven appear here attached to the, the, the cluster that I've created. So now I have four virtual machines that I've created. Pretty cool, huh? So this for each object is awesome, and the presentation options are relatively awesome uh, when you have a single parameter that you need to populate with the values. But as I want to show, the, 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 I showed you this for a reason because I want to show you where the actual presentation of some of these values can get a little, get a kind of goofy when it comes time to doing multiple different arrays. So let's go back here into our orchestrator client. Let's close this down because I want to show you the actual one we're interested in, which is provision VM from a template. Remember, our whole point here is to be able to create an environment for the developers so that they can create a bunch of virtual machines whenever they see fit. The original creation of this workflow allowed, if I go back here, allowed the developers to identify the storage quality and the VM memory 
independently for each virtual machine that they create. Now, it is still possible for you to accomplish this using the for each objects, the, the activity. Uh, however, the way in which it gets presented is a little challenging. Let's create a new workflow here called provision multiple VMs from templates. So my new workflow here, provision multiple VMs from a template. And I'll choose OK here. And I'll go back to the schema. And what we want to do is the for each element again, except this time we're interested in the provision task that we did before, provision VM from template. This will actually go through and actually create the virtual machines and copy them from the template, do all the work to customize them for the virtual machine names that we create. When I do this, Notice how what we're creating here are three different arrays. One that's a string entry for the name of the VM, one that's associated with the data store that we need, so multiple values for it, and one that's a number that's associated with the memory that we need to create. Now let me show you first how this might look if you end up just pulling all of these three into the for each object uh, element. Notice here how we have this promote workflow input parameters, and we have these three items here. There are these three little icons here that if I mouse over them, they're going to tell me if selected, the element will iterate over each of the elements in the parameter. So I can choose which ones of these I actually want to be part of the, the, the looping as the looping goes through. I'm going to keep in all three of these for now just to show you what this looks like. I'll hit the Promote button. We're all set to go. I can validate. We're good there. And if I run that, it brings up a dialog box now that, te uh, that prompts me for the virtual machine names. So I'm used to this because I saw this just a second ago. Here's VM, uh, what are we at now? VM 8, 9, and 10, I think. So VM 8, VM 9, and VM 10. But here's where things get a little silly. Once I get done with that, I have no real good way to associate the names with the result names that I want out of an array of the data store options that I select. Now we haven't done any of the presentation things here, so I'm just getting the chooser like I'm used to seeing. But with the, what I'm essentially asking my users to do, if I were to create those, is to identify which data store I want in each case, one, two, and three. If I hit the Accept button here, you'll see how I'm creating an array with three values that are essentially the same in the same pointer area, the same location as the three values for 8, 9, and 10. I'd have to actually accomplish the same thing here again when it comes time to identify what the memory size should be. So 2048, uh, 2048, and 2048. That would complete all the necessary information that's needed to loop this thing three times for three different virtual machines. It'll work, but will it work appropriately for your needs? Is this something you're, that your users are going to be intelligent enough to have to figure out? The answer is, is that, well, when it comes to presentation, there aren't a lot of options, at least in this version of Orchestrator, in this solution, to be able to improve this somewhat. But there is a way that you can accomplish the task if you're OK with limiting the values that you need your users to end up inputting. Let me go back here and let's recreate this, this workflow. I will remove this. Oops. I will remove this. Just go ahead and delete the thing. And let's go and recreate this workflow now and just limit things a little bit more so that we can create it in a way that makes it really usable for our users. So provision, a via, uh, provision multiple VMs from a template. In this case, I'll choose OK and go back to schema and then go back to for each element. And instead of actually bring, looping across all the values, what I can do instead is just identify the couple of values or the single value that I'm interested in. In this case, would be name. So this will say whatever names get put into this, this workflow, those names are going to get iterated by the for each element through each of the names that end up in the array. If I hit promote here, I'm actually, well, I'm actually going to end up not validating correctly. Oh, maybe I will. Good job. I am going to validate correctly. But what instead what I have here is a single entry for the data store and a single entry for the memory, which will be associated with each of the values that end up in that array. Okay, so more or less. I can say one time what I want all the virtual machines to be for their memory, and one time what I want them to be for their data store, but I'll still create three virtual machines. Let me choose close here and run. 
So you can see that the new virtual machine name can be set to my VM8, VM8, VM9, and VM10. Uh, but then I, when I come down to the additional values down here, I can set the data store independently, one data store for all of the virtual machines and one memory size for all the virtual machines that I intend to create. So some benefits, some limitations here in terms of what you can do with for each. I'm not going to run this because gosh, that'll take a long period of time. I don't even think I have the disk space in order to accomplish that. Or you could use some of the other attributes or some of the other uh, elements that are down here in order to create different types of workflows. So for example, you may set up a, ne a nested workflow where you end up executing the workflow, uh, multiple workflows at once. Or you may set up uh, an asynchronous workflow where you identify a bunch of workflows that to, to execute asynchronously. All of these are kind of advanced topics. Play around with these because there are definitely some interesting ways in which you can collect these things together in order to accomplish the task. I will also point you over here to the basic options where there is an increase and decrease counter element that will allow you, if you need to go and create that old fashioned loop like what was done in previous versions of Orchestrator, you can accomplish that through the use of these increase and decrease counter and by establishing what that counter should be. So a somewhat simplistic solution here for getting our virtual machines set up. We're still on the path of getting that workflow created for our developers so we can create a bunch of virtual machines whenever they need. What have we talked about this nugget? We've talked about looping and the variety of ways in which you can loop inside of your workflows. Some that are great, some that are perhaps not so great. We explored the for each object as well as some of the other ways and the, the old fashioned ways in which workflows can be, have looping added to them and took a look at some of the presentation items and how we may have to make some decisions based off of how we want these to be viewed by the users who are selecting, those, or selecting and executing those workflows. Coming up next, we're going to extend the workflow that we have, this, this deployment workflow for virtual machines, with some additional things that exist outside of vSphere. Now, when I create a bunch of virtual machines, maybe I want to put them into a group, or maybe I want to create user accounts and put those in a group. Any of those classic Active Directory tasks that add to the manual effort that's required anytime I get a work order asking me to accomplish something. If it's something that I can set up here in Orchestrator, well, then it's something I can include in with my workflows. That's the topic of our next nugget, so until then, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.